Is that on? Yes, okay. Uh, so, uh, thank you all for showing up. And uh, today, I'm going to be talking about a, a relatively new project uh, that we have going on in my group. Um, this is work with a fellow uh, faculty member, Ricardo Gutierrez of Suna, whose emphasis, area of emphasis is signal processing. Uh, Tamara Shipman, uh, my wife and domain expert, uh, Kyle Montiero and Devendra Carapa, who are uh, graduate start students working with Ricardo and I. And the, the topic is how can we create a digital library of sign language content? So sign language is a little different than other languages. It doesn't have a written form. So uh, content in sign language is kind of hard to access, but there's a lot of it, as I'll talk about. So in practice, when we look at the sign language community today, uh, the availability of webcams and stuff means that uh, members of the community, they just they have an idea, they want to say something, they want to communicate, they, they set up their computer, they record their sign language, uh, they put it on YouTube, and then they mail around the pointer to that, uh, that the URL to that uh, video. And so this works for getting information from point to point, but it doesn't create a uh, searchable kind of uh, archive of sign language expression. And uh, there, so locating sign language is difficult because these large video sharing sites have lots of videos and only a small percentage of what they have is actually in sign language. And there are a few uh, small sign language only websites, but they require people to upload the videos to them and want to be owners. So there's this really real need for there to be a distributed digital library of sign language where content doesn't have to be uh, identified as being part of this collection uh, by the people who are uploading the content to YouTube or other video sharing sites. So you could say, well, why not just use uh, YouTube search? Well, uh, one of the challenges <coughs> is that text-based search is, you know, we all know it, there are lots of issues with using queries to locate content. Uh, but when you're thinking about locating content in a particular language, like American Sign Language, on a particular topic, say the Affordable Care Act, uh, it becomes really difficult that the, these terms start interacting in, in weird ways. And to give you an example of that, we did a study looking at um, the top 10 news queries for 2011 from uh, Yahoo, and then we got the up to top 20, if there were 20 uh, results, where we took the term the, uh, of the news query, and then we added ASL and sign language as additional query terms to try to get the, the videos on YouTube. And as you see, when, when we do hand coding of the results, uh, you end up with about 70% uh, in this case of the videos that returned are on topic, but only about 45% are actually in sign language and on topic. And so we're, we're missing out a, a lot in uh, finding things that are both in sign language and on topic. <coughs> And a, a later study that we did, a larger one, where we looked at 100 topics, uh, 10 topics each in 10 common information-oriented uh, search uh, genres, so food, health, etc., showed an, an even bigger problem where <coughs> using the same methodology, we showed that only 13% of the results that were coming back were actually in sign language and on topic. Um, now, some of the the variance here between the two studies, YouTube could have had, and certainly did change the way they did their ranking. Uh, we we look at the, these results and um, 
the text based, we get different results today than we would back when we originally ran them. So, but in any case, this is text based search is on a video sharing site isn't going to get members of the sign language community to the the videos that they want. So why is this? Well, there's a part of it is you know, we all know that tags or words are ambiguous. Uh, whether a video is in sign language or about sign language is confusing. When you add ASL sign language, you're saying you're, you're also getting videos that are about sign language, not in sign language. And there are different meanings of sign language. In 2011, uh, uh, Occupy Wall Street happened, and there happened to be some uh, commentary on the use of language and signs uh, at protests. And so sign language has uh, meanings outside of the... the so what we really want to do is find a way to support uh, access. We want to create a, a place for the sign language community to go to locate where they are more likely to be able to find a set of videos that are in sign language, and then they can work on locating uh, videos on different topics within that. So, um, Towards that end, we've created something, the Sign Language Digital Library, our SLATL, and our, it's a work in progress, let's say. Uh, we are at the early stages of creating the portal side. Uh, what we've spent a lot of time on is figuring out how we can work with existing video sharing sites to provide this community access. Um, and so our model is one of uh, looking at how, how can we uh, bring sign language in without having to, requiring the people who are uploading uh, these videos to tag their stuff as sign language. They're not relying on that as being uh, accurate. And so uh, the way we do this is through a couple feedback loops in getting content from the video sharing sites on the left over to our known sign language corpus in kind of the middle that is used uh, in by the portal, the, the, the viewer. So there are a couple different loops here. One is that we want to start out with an initial collection that we know is in sign language and then use that to train uh, classifiers that look at video features to recognize additional sign language videos. So this is vi traditional video feature extraction and classification. And then the second part of it is getting the community involved. And we're not there yet, but we, are, uh, we have done some work in thinking about what types of feedback we need from the community. Is something, when people say that this is not a good video, is if they're saying it's not in sign language or it's not on topic or that the information they don't trust or something like that. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about our work, the work we've done to date on uh, our classification problem. Uh, this is where, so we have a very basic uh, traditional uh, video classifying problem. We start with we start with the simple version of our problem, one signer facing the camera like we would get <coughs> in, in those examples you saw where I'm facing, I would be facing the camera, signing, and then uploading it. And uh, we're going to use standard video processing techniques. We're not uh, developing new video processing uh, capabilities. Uh, and picking features that, because of our knowledge of sign language, we thought would be valuable in differentiating sign language from other forms of videos having a person facing a camera and moving to some degree, and then test and iterate. And so here's an example of what happens. Uh, this is was our first sign language video classifier. We do a, a, a dynamic background model extract the foreground pixels, use, do some filtering to get uh, what is the, the 
biggest objects that are moving, which we hope are the hands. And then we do uh, face detection to figure out where the hands are relative to the face. So uh, sign language is all about where it, the, the content of sign language is uh, hand shape, direction of movement, speed of movement. Uh, there, is, there is facial expression. Um, and so uh, knowing the, you can look at these features, uh, the movement of the hands relative to the face gives you a fair amount of information about uh, kind of the types of gestures that are common in sign language. And the result of this, uh, we came up with five features, <coughs> which I'm not going to talk about in great detail. But the results of this, we ended up doing really well uh, in terms of having about 90% recall and greater than 80% precision with this first view on a really tough uh, training set. We, we took uh, 100 videos in sign language, ASL and British Sign Language, which is completely different than ASL. Um, and then uh, 100 videos of that we thought would be likely, would likely confound our classifiers because they were the wildly gesturing uh, weathermen or news reporters, the videos that you would expect that would, would this type of processing would get wrong. Um, one thing we learned was that symmetry of motion is really important for, it was better than the other four video features we uh, hypothesized at first realized would be valuable. It by itself was better than the other four combined. And so in our second classifier, we generalized from that to create uh, what we call polar motion profiles, where we look at the distance of the hands from the face and the position on the polar uh, uh, region from the face. And uh, we use this. <laughs> and we also generalized the problem to being not just one signer facing the camera, but have allowing for multiple signers. And it had, the second sign language classifier had similar precision, but much higher recall for you know a broader collection of sign language videos, which is by design true. It, the first classifier wasn't designed to, to recognize when there were multiple people in the video. So what are we up to now? Well, to, now we're looking at, uh, building out the portal, uh, trying to get this type, uh, the, the right mechanisms in for people in the community to provide feedback on uh, the videos that are being presented. And we're working on improving the sign language classifiers as well. Uh, one thing I didn't talk about is the efficiency of our algorithms, and that's because we didn't look at the efficiency very much. We uh, kind of over went overkill in the amount of processing we were using, and we need to back off that for realistic uh, deployment. Uh, another problem is if you've ever watched Switched at Birth or any uh, seen videos where there's some uh, content that's spoken and some that's in sign, uh, the pro problem of segmentation, recognizing sign language segments in a longer video. Uh, I said that American Sign Language is completely different than British Sign Language, so uh, looking at video <coughs> processing techniques to help differentiate between these two uh, in particular, um, and metadata-based uh, techniques as well for differentiating between the different sign languages. Uh, yeah, moving beyond <coughs> video features. So, in conclusion, I. I hope I've convinced you. This is an interesting problem. This, is, this content is language, but it's not language that is indexed the way we traditionally provide search into a language library. And so the problem right now is to um, just provide access to the things that are in that language on a given topic, uh, on or near a given topic. Um, we're hoping that Slato will be, uh, once we uh, roll it out, will be a, a real distributed digital library for this type of content. We'll start with you know, a couple sources for 
video sharing, but hopefully that'll be more over time. And we've developed and tested, you know, some of the core techniques we think are important for for building that collection to make it so that there's not as much human effort involved in uh, creating this collection as there is in most of the video sharing sites for, uh, aimed towards the sign language community right now. And with that, um, here's my contact information, and I'm happy to take any questions. <laughs>